Senegal has a new president, Basiru Diomaye Faye, after the historic elections that were held on March 24th. Faye's victory is a strong rejection of the policies of incumbent President Macky Sall, who tried to hold on to power by postponing these elections. Sall's Prime Minister, Amadou Ba, who was Faye's main opponent, conceded defeat after initially claiming that there was a possibility of a second round. This is no ordinary victory. Faye's promises and political background are quite unique and he was backed by the vastly popular Osman Sonko, who had earlier been disqualified from contesting. There is a distinct anti-imperialist flavour to the politics of Sonko and Faye. It is important to remember that Macky Sall was seen as a puppet of France and many of his policies were wildly unpopular due to that reason. So what does Faye's victory mean? We go to Abdul to find out. Abdul, thank you so much for joining us. A very important election uh, for the whole of the African continent actually and a very decisive verdict towards maybe a new policy framework. But we'll, before getting to that, can you tell us the context in which the elections took place? There was a lot of controversy over whether these elections would even be conducted in the first place and uh, there was a lot of push and pull around that. So maybe could you give us a bit of context as to uh, the, you know, the situation in which the elections were held? Well, Prashant, it, uh, it, uh, before the final announcement were made earlier uh, this month, it was not very clear whether uh, Senegal will see uh, the elections this year or not, because if uh, if uh, Mickey Sal, the president, was allowed to uh, uh, do his uh, whatever he wanted to do, the election would have been postponed till uh, December of this year. Of course, the constitutional councils did, did not agree with it and finally pushed him to announce the date. Uh, and finally, the elections were uh, elections happened. Of course, Mickey Sal was basically afraid of kind of uh, uh, that whatever he he basically wanted to extend his uh, term in power uh, the two terms limit in senegal's uh, 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 polity of course it seems that mugisal uh, did not find it uh, uh, sufficient enough to carry out his policies whatever policy he wa he had uh, wished to implement uh, which of course were very unpopular if you see there were protests happening since 2021, at least, if not before that, in uh, popular protest where thousands of people marched all across the country demanding uh, kind of removal of the government, demanding uh, restoration of uh, some kind of form of democracy, demanding the uh, end of the corruption and the kind of system which Minky Sal was uh, uh, identified with. Uh, 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 the government uh, led to uh, repress, uh, try to repress the uh, protests, which uh, led to not only the uh, arrest of hundreds of uh, opposition activists, including the main opposition uh, leader Sonko and his uh, dissolution of his party, but also killing of around uh, dozens of protesters. Uh, some estimates say around 60 of protesters. So um, the elections uh, happened after uh, there was a pop pressure and uh, because the constitutional council stood uh, uh, on its ground to kind of not to agree with Mickey Sal's uh, proposal to extend the elections. Uh, uh, of course, there are other, uh, as I said, the, the, the dysfunctional and oppressive government of Sal was primary, uh, primarily responsible for the popular movement and which ultimately has led to the kind of result which we see now. Abdul, uh, now in this context, like you said, uh, this is election is a definite rejection of Macky Sall's policies. Uh, you know, he de desperately was, I think, also trying to extend his tenure so that someone from his uh, side of the, someone from his political side could win, but that hasn't happened. We have a new president whose political perspectives seem very different. So tell us a bit about this new president, his background, you know, and what kind of policies he's kind of promised or what are the ideas he's championed throughout the campaign? Well, uh, Prashant, uh, as we all know, Faye is quite young and, and, and given that he was not the first choice to contest the election, Sonko was. And, uh, and Sonko's uh, uh, policies, uh, as I said before, were primarily opposed to uh, the kind of policies which Mickey Sal is aligned with or is known for. And uh, one of the major issues, uh, of course, uh, apart from the fact that there is an economic uh, power, uh, economic crisis in the country, there is massive unemployment and so on and so forth, which has kind of contributed to uh, 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 to the rise of popular dissent against uh, Mekhi Sal's or uh, his, uh, government and his policy. But uh, there are there are al also major structural uh, uh, problems which um, Fair 
has tried to address during his election campaign of course carrying forward the sonco's uh, um, uh, political agenda which is related to kind of uh, coming uh, bringing senegal out of the colonial uh, 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 you can say fold kind of uh, trying to uh, he has promised to reintroduce new currency which will take senegal uh, out from the uh, uh, the control of the um, uh, 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 its economy uh, from uh, by the uh, french in particular uh, french economy so that is one major uh, thing which fair and his uh, government uh, fair has promised during the election campaign also there are uh, uh, there is a strong focus on renegotiation on the uh, uh, gas and, and uh, hydrocarbon production which senegal is going to have uh, uh, the fay is saying that his government will if he comes far he will renegotiate those deals which uh, miki sal's government has uh, signed with different countries and most of these countries uh, fay has a uh, uh, election campaign uh, hints that basically leads to colonial uh, exploitation of a uh, country's uh, natural resources and so these are the two major prom- uh, promises which fay has uh, made had made during his election campaign uh, along with uh, the new economic policies which are promised to kind of bring more employment major uh, 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 relief from the bureaucratic uh, uh, structures which were created during the during last previous uh, you can say two decades at least if not uh, since the uh, decolonization of senegal uh, and and kind of a fresh uh, uh, understanding of the economic Uh, uh issues apart from that uh, fay has also promised a pan africanism we do not yet know whether that pan africanism would be the pan africanism which uh, africa is known for uh, uh, post decolonization uh, which uh, several other con- uh, leaders have promised in the past but uh, uh, at least this is a talk which basically promises which gives us some kind of promises about uh, a, a kind of uh, re uh, orientation of senegal's politics vis-a-vis uh, its colonial past vis-a-vis its orientation towards africa and of course vis-a-vis the uh, policies which directly affect people uh, on to, on the uh, in the in their day to day basis right abdul thank you so much for the update but do stay back we'll come back to you for the next story our next story is from west asia where israel seems to be in no mood to listen to the un security council resolution on a ceasefire it has of course continued attacks on gaza but it has also launched strikes into southern lebanon which killed seven people the lebanese resistance group hezbollah responded with rocket fire there are also reports of israeli attacks on syria we go back to abdul for more details welcome back abdul so once again israel firing into lebanon uh you know again human lives being lost and this kind of indicates a definitely no end to the warfare despite what the un security council um has called for but could you take us through what has happened over the past 24 to 48 hours on that front well prashant ever since the united nations security council adopted the resolution it, it seems that there is a increase in israel's aggression uh not only towards uh, palestinians in gaza but also uh, to the regional uh Uh, to the larger region as a whole if you see uh, lebanon uh, ha- was targeted at least uh, a dozen of times uh, since la- in last 24 hours by the israeli uh, both air force and the artillery and in which uh, uh, almost a dozen of people were killed uh, one of those attacks was carried out deep inside northern israel uh, which is rare uh, given uh, since october 8 when israel started bombing lebanon uh, it has done that only a couple of times and and this has been as, as per the records the deepest uh, israel has attacked uh, since october 7 uh, sorry october 8 uh, inside lebanon um uh, uh, the attack uh, in the nabatia region uh, was primarily against an emergency response center where the medics and volunteers were basically working uh, to provide relief to the people who were affected by the israeli bombings and and due to the war um, and so uh, of course this this constitutes a attack on a civilian target uh, but uh, one should not uh, uh, by the way there is also an extension of israel's aggression in the region as i said before that this attacks were not limited only to lebanon there were attacks there are reports of attacks 
coming from Syria as well. Uh, inside Syria, in the uh, Dar al Zur pro province, uh, Israel was uh, uh, basically Israel attacked at least uh, 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 ten times, uh, as per the Al Mayadeen's report, uh, which has killed uh, uh, around seven of uh, seven people, uh, including uh, uh, some of them, of course, Syrian military personnel. And more than a dozen uh, Syrian civilians have been also, have also been wounded in these attacks. Uh, there is a confusion at, as if yet, uh, as if now, whether U.S. participated in those attacks or not. Uh, there are reports from Sana and Anmayadin which basically said that U.S. was also part of those attacks, but uh, U.S. has uh, denied officially that it has it did not participate in those attacks. Right, Abdul. Uh, in this context, also maybe could you take us through what is happening in the region as a whole? How has Lebanon been responding and also the fact that there have been massive protests uh, across the region uh, after the UN Security Council resolution? Well, Prashant, ever since the uh, resolution was passed, uh, of course, the, the people in the region have been demonstrating against the war in Gaza and demanding not only a ceasefire, but also a, a breaking uh, of relationship of their countries, respective countries, uh, uh, with Israel. So, for example, Jordan, uh, the, which, is, which is now the center of the largest uh, protests in the last few hours, um, uh, last at least for the last three days, sorry, uh, the protests are ongoing. Uh, uh, thousands of people have gathered uh, uh, in front of the Israeli embassy in Amman, demanding uh, uh, that, uh, uh, the, uh, that uh, Israel implements the ceasefire resolution, which was adopted by the UN Security Council. But they're also demanding, as I said before, that Jordan should break its diplomatic relationship uh, with Israel. Um, of course, uh, uh, if we talk about the larger region, we know that uh, uh, the Ansar Allah group in Yemen uh, or the resistant groups uh, in Iraq, uh, as Hezbollah in Lebanon, ha have basically created a kind of axis of resistance and have been no, uh, basically pressing uh, through their uh, attacks on the Israel-bound ships by the Ansar Allah group uh, in Red Sea uh, or the uh, uh, resistance groups uh, in against the U.S. Uh, presence inside the region. They have been basically trying to pressurize uh, both the U.S. and Israelis to basically stop the war in, in Gaza and kind of... Uh, 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 work on for, uh, for a larger peace settlement. But uh, so far, it has not happened. Finally, U.S. seems to have kind of um, realized, it seems their actions, at least in the, uh, in the uh, during the voting in the last resolution, hints that it has realized the importance of uh, peace at this moment. But uh, uh, Israel does not seem to agree with it, and it continues to uh, uh, carry out attacks uh, and in fact, increased has increased the attacks. If we just talked about what happened in Lebanon, but also uh, what is happening in Gaza at this moment. Thank you so much, Abdul, for those updates. And that's all we have in today's Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. In the meantime, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org, follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.